Hi there everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be talking about several videos that I have come across online which talk about preventing and even in some instances reversing cataracts. Now I will talk about these particular videos and then I will share my thoughts about the statements that they make and whether I agree with them or not. So if you want to learn more about cataracts and how you can reduce the risks of developing them then please stay tuned. So I have made videos on cataracts previously, but for those who are not familiar with what a cataract is, essentially if you look at the picture on screen now, the eye has a lens contained within it. This lens is responsible for focusing light onto the back of the eye and therefore helping us to see clearly. This lens is usually clear as we get older, this lens becomes cloudier and therefore the light focusing ability becomes more and more challenged. It gets to the point where the light coming in and therefore the vision that the patient is achieving becomes so reduced that they get to the point that they need cataract surgery. Now, there are no medical treatments at present for cataracts and exclusively surgery is performed to try and reverse the aging process that has taken place. Now I'm talking about acquired, i.e. age-related cataracts here, so bear that in mind. In terms of what can be done before cataract surgery, patients will see their optometrists or their opticians and they will continue to give them up-to-date pairs of glasses to try and help them maximise the vision that they can achieve. We take it for granted that cataract surgery can be performed on patients and their age-related cataract can be reversed. In some countries, actually in a lot of countries across the world which are still developing, not everybody has the luxury of being able to access surgery for their cataracts. And therefore there's been a drive to try and identify risks in order to combat the processes that are causing the cataract. Moreover, people have been wondering whether there is a medical treatment that can be potentially given to try and reduce the burden and need on expensive surgery. So people have long considered whether drops can be used to try and prevent the formation of cataracts or reverse the changes if they have already occurred. There are numerous classification systems for cataracts which are beyond the scope of this video, but broadly speaking, you can consider them in two groups, those being acquired and those being congenital. If you read any medical literature, there will be a certain list of risk factors which can increase the likelihood of you developing cataracts. So now I will mention what those are. Diabetes, steroid use, ultraviolet exposure, smoking, alcohol consumption, certain ocular diseases such as retinitis pigmentosa and having uveitis, any kind of ocular trauma, an underlying genetic predisposition, and then radiation and chemotherapy. In terms of thinking about this on a molecular level, what needs to be understood is the fact that the lens is clear and the important components within the lens are proteins which give it its structure and allow it to function. Now, what happens to these proteins is important because when they ultimately become damaged in some way, shape or form, that then leads to the increased risk of developing cataracts. Two important processes on a metabolic level that we know increase the risk of cataract formation include glycation, which is essentially the coupling of sugar to another molecule, and then oxidation. Oxidation is when a substance comes into contact with oxygen and you get the formation of an oxidizing substance. Now, we know that glycation and oxidation increase the risk of developing cataracts. Therefore, it's not difficult to try and comprehend why patients with diabetes, for example, 
who tend to have elevated blood sugar levels are at increased risk of glycation and therefore at increased risk of developing cataracts. Now we see this in clinical practice where patients with diabetes will tend to develop cataracts at an earlier age. Some of the videos that I came across online suggested that making radical changes to your diet and eliminating foods and certain food groups will help you to reduce the risk of cataracts and even help you to reverse changes that have already occurred. Now, it's important to put this into context. For example, if a patient has diabetes and they have strict control of their blood sugar levels and they get them to a level where the patient is happy and their physician looking after their diabetic status is happy. Therefore, theoretically, they should be at decreased risk of developing a cataract. However, they may still go on to develop a cataract. Therefore, advising patients to eliminate complete food groups. So there was a statement online which said, completely eliminate sugars from your diet, including from fruits, is, in my opinion, not a sensible suggestion because firstly we all need to have a balanced diet secondly a lot of people do get natural sugars from fruits and thirdly if you do eliminate certain food groups from your diet you may still go on to develop a cataract regardless so such decisions shouldn't be taken lightly and you should always speak to your medical practitioner and primary care physician or even a dietitian before you decide to make such a drastic change to your diet because ultimately if you change one thing and you eliminate one thing that could have a knock-on effect and it might help you potentially from developing a cataract or reduce the risk theoretically but it might then start affecting you in different ways. Another troubling statement that I came across online was the avoidance of corticosteroids. In an ideal world, nobody would take corticosteroids. I mean, the risks or potential risks associated with taking steroids include things such as brittle bones, ulcers within one's stomach, you can get changes to mental state, you can get increased risk of blood pressure, and diabetes, to name a few. However, in certain circumstances, corticosteroids are unavoidable and they are imperative to try and treat the condition that the patient has presented with. So in the context and world of ophthalmology, there's a certain condition called giant cell arthritis, which I've made a video on previously. In this condition, patients present with very poor vision, if not complete blindness in one eye, and the risk is that they could get exactly the same process occurring in the other eye in a very short space of time. Now, the way to prevent this is by giving high dose steroids and patients tend to stay on these steroids for a long period of time. So giving advice such as avoid corticosteroids, in my opinion, isn't a very sensible statement because firstly, nobody wants to take steroids unnecessarily anyway. Secondly, if you are faced with a scenario such as the one I described, where the two options are you take the steroids and it prevents you from going blind in the second eye, or you avoid the steroids because you have an increased risk of developing cataract, but you will go blind from the problem with the giant cell arthritis, then the advice doesn't really hold up. So my point being, and my issue with this statement is, nobody would recommend for a patient to take a certain medication unnecessarily, and patients would not want to take medications that come with a significant risk profile unnecessarily, unless there was a very clear benefit and goal that everybody was trying to achieve. So there are certain things that are within our control that we can deploy as strategies to give ourselves the best possible chance of not developing cataracts. This includes smoking, this includes reducing alcohol consumption, this also includes avoiding ocular trauma. 
There are other conditions, certain genetic conditions, which if the patient has, means that they are at increased risk of developing cataracts. So such things are out of our control. Also, natural age-related cataracts, the clues in the name, as we get older, the risk of developing these also increases. There's not a lot we can do about aging. Another common group of patients that develop cataracts early and they cannot really do anything about it is patients with uveitis. Now, uveitis, again, I've made videos on this, is when you develop inflammation within your eye. In order to treat this inflammation, patients are put on classically drop steroids, but these drop steroids may need to be escalated to injections within or around the eye or even tablets. Now, again, if you have such significant inflammation that you need steroids, these steroids are unavoidable. And as a byproduct, you will develop cataracts at an earlier age compared to somebody who does not take these steroids. So it's all very well saying, as mentioned slightly earlier, to avoid steroids. But in unavoidable situations, you will increase the risk of patients developing cataracts sooner. In the recent past, there was a lot of excitement about a potential eye drop to try and prevent, if not reverse, cataracts. Now, this particular drop was N-acetylcarnosine, N-A-C. The key things to know about this eye drop are the key component is a protein, L-carnosine, and this protein has an antioxidant effect, which is, if you recall what I mentioned earlier in the video about oxidation and oxidative damage, it reduces and minimizes the risk of these processes causing detrimental damaging effects to the structures that they are in and around. Now, in order to get this L-carnosine into the eye, it's coupled with another agent, which makes it N-acetylcarnosine. Now, there was a big review done on this particular drop. This Cochrane review basically stated that at present, there's no convincing evidence that this drop actually works. The recommendation from this review was that in order to more accurately ascertain the effectiveness and potential uses of this eye drop, it needs to be passed through robust clinical trials in order to get meaningful, accurate and reliable data. The very topical issue of AI was recently used by a group which looked at certain medications that patients may be taking already that help to reduce the risk of cataract formation. Now, this fascinating paper found that medications such as aspirin and ibuprofen can actually delay and reduce the risk of patients developing cataracts. What the group did find was though that with these medications, the suppressive effects of reducing the risk of developing cataracts, particularly with aspirin and ibuprofen, reduced over time. Interestingly, different drugs ultimately target different biochemical metabolic pathways and therefore if they are reducing and suppressing the risk of you developing a cataract, they are therefore working classically on components that promote or increase the risk of inflammation and oxidative damage. The reason I made this video was because online there's a lot of information circulated and in a world where people are looking for quick likes and videos to go viral, they have clickbait titles and then when you actually watch the content, it doesn't actually stack up with what published literature states. Now, I hope through this video, I have presented the many different risks that are associated with cataract formation and ways in which you can help to reduce the risk of cataracts forming. However, I hope I've made you realize that in certain circumstances, the risk is unavoidable. It's important where things are in your control to try and help yourselves as much as possible. So reducing the amount that you smoke, if not completely eliminating it, and trying to protect your eyes from UV exposure sensibly as much as possible. But other things, as previously mentioned, are not in our control, such as the natural process of aging. I hope you've enjoyed this video about 
cataract formation and reducing the risks of developing cataracts. If you have liked this video, please do give it a thumbs up, please like, please subscribe, and please do comment. I look forward to reading your comments.